Okay, today we're going to look at how to make somebody walk out of a door and then walk back through the door uh, in RPG Maker VX Ace. Uh, first we'll start off with, uh, you can see we've made a door uh, in our little house area. So in that door, this is what we're looking at. Uh, first thing we're going to do is rename it door so that we can always find that object. Next thing we want to do is go to the space just above the door and we're going to create a new event. Uh, we're going to name that whatever the character we're uh, in question is. In this case we're going to name the character Ito. Uh, so now we've got those two events. The door and just above the door is the Edo event. Next thing we're going to do is where we want our character to walk to to create these events, we're going to create a third event. <clears throat> we're going to call this event cause because it causes something else to happen, but you can rename it whatever you want, just something that will help you remember. We're going to set the trigger to player touch down on the bottom. <clears throat> Uh, set it below character so that the char character can walk over top of it, of course. So player touch, that means whenever the player's character steps on it, it will automatically activate. Uh, the other two events you'll see, uh, doesn't much matter what the triggers are because they're going to be affected by this event. That's why it's causing things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to door. We're going to copy the entire event page and then we're going to paste it to create a new one. So it's going to be, since we copied page 1, this is going to create an identical page 2. And then we're going to change the graphic. We're going to change it to the half open door. And then we're going to create a switch called half open. When we create that switch, see it's called half open. Uh, we're going to apply that. And we're going to make page 2 only work when switch half open is on. We're going to recopy that page, paste a new one, and do the same thing we just did on uh, to page 2. We're going to do that to page 3 now, except we're going to make it the completely open door. Now this one, we're going to activate with the switch door open. When door open is on, this, this page will happen. Now, we're also going to make this through, which means that characters and that NPCs can walk through it. So our door is done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to cause and we're going to control switches. We're going to make half open turn on. So we've done that. Then we're going to create a sound effect. Let's play sound effect and music and sounds on page two. Play sound effect. Uh, let's go ahead and select push. Uh, you can choose whatever sound effect you like, but I think push makes a pretty decent door sound. <coughs> and then we're going to create another switch. This one's going to be door open. Activate that, we're going to turn it on. We don't need to turn door uh, uh, half open off though, because since door open is the latest page of the door event, it will be uh, the highest priority event. <coughs> So if you have multiple switches open, the last page will be the one that activates. So we don't need to turn half open off, which will come in to save us some time later by not turning it off now. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a move route. And this move route is going to control the Edo event. That's why we name things that we can remember. We have door, Edo, and event, uh, I'm sorry, door, Edo, and cause. And then we have the player, of course. So we're going to affect Edo here. First thing we're going to do is change Edo's graphic. Now remember when we made Edo, we didn't set a graphic for it. That makes it uh, completely invisible then. So we're going to change the graphic, and just for a lark, we're going to choose this one here. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, actor number 6 in the actor 1 panel. <coughs> she seems like a fine lass. So we've now changed the graphic to actor 1 dash 5. Or comma 5, whatever you want to call it. So, the next thing we're going to do is go from the Edo event and count downwards to one hex 
uh, or one grid away from where the player is standing. And we get one, two, three, four, five. So we set, we go back to our set move route, and we hit the space bar that lets us edit what we've done. And we move Ito down five steps. So this is what we've got right now. Uh, when the player steps on it, because it's trigger player touch, uh, the half open switch, switch number one, is going to activate. It's going to play a sound effect, and then switch number two, door open, will activate. Set move route, Edo, wait, which means that the player won't have any control until after it's done, <coughs> and the next, uh, the next bit of coding, the next event, won't happen until the movement is finished. We uh, change the actor graphic to the little brown hair, brown haired chick, and she moves down five steps. So we can throw in a text, I, you know, a text event, whatever you want to do after that, whatever y you want to have happen, uh, and then we'll open up another movement event. Now remember, we had her move down five, so now we're going to have her move up five times. Up, 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 up. Same thing we did before, it's just uh, moving her up instead of down this time. Now we got two choices here. <coughs> to make her disappear again, we can either go back to change graphic, and we can give her an invisible graphic, you know, just hit none, and she'll go back to what she was before, no graphic. Uh... That's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it, and this is especially useful if, say, you know, you're just after the event teleporting or transferring to a different map, so it really doesn't matter. <coughs> you can just hit transparent on, and that will make the sprite invisible. So that's just a quick, simple way to do it. Uh, so we're done with that, and this is what we look at now. We have our switch half open on, a sound effect, door open on. Uh, Ito moves, uh, changes graphic and moves down five. Uh, some text. Ito moves up and transparent on. We're going to use transparent on for this example. So then we're going to uh, do this real easy. We'll just copy and paste the events uh, we had up there, the switches, and we're going to change them. Uh, completely reverse them. <coughs> so now we've got door open, the sound effect, and half open. So select door open, hit the space bar to edit it, and we're going to turn door open off. Now, since we never turned half open off, that means that half open will now be, you know, since it's still activated, page two of our door event will automatically activate. We can change the sound effect to close. I mean, you can change it to anything you want, but I like close one because it's kind of a small door closing. Good interior door. <coughs> And then the last thing we have to do is change half open to off. Now what this will do is it'll put it back to page one of the door event. So it'll be a closed door, inaccessible. And that's all you've got to do for that. Uh, now let's take a look at what happens whenever we try to play the game. This is what you've accomplished, or what we've accomplished here together. You can see we walk over there, activate the switch, you saw the door, or heard the door, uh, a shameless plug, <laughs> yeah, and a shameless plug for RPG Maker VX Ace, because that's what we made. There the door closes, and we have succeeded. From there you can teleport to wherever, or do whatever you want to do. Uh, I hope this helped out with, uh, you know, making people walk through doors and stuff and you can use that door technique for uh, just make it activated by uh, 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 the action button if you want your character to walk through a door uh, it's a not too difficult once you know what you're doing uh, like I said I, I hope that helps you out and uh, thanks for coming thanks for playing